You're listening to the Crochet Conversations podcast with Ines and Mel, and this is episode 51. Exactly how much is crochet worth? Hello! Oh my gosh! Hello, guys! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of our podcast. Yes, hi guys, happy Sunday. I mean, we're back for a new and interesting crochet topic. Did you guys miss us? <laughs> I hope so, because I, f- I, I did miss like coming back to do this again. I feel like we need to explain where we were. I did post up um, a post on our Instagram page. So in case you missed the announcement on our Instagram page, then you would not know, I yeah. guess, why we went missing for two weeks. But basically... Uh, when we were away on holiday, we did pre-record an episode. So the very last episode you, you heard was a pre-recorded one because we were away on a vacation. Uh, while we were there, I received a job offer, like a, a quick job offer that I couldn't turn down. It was part of what I studied, you know, um, in my arts college. And uh, it was an, a last minute decision that we decided to take on this project. It's not crochet related, so I, I'm not at liberty to discuss the details. But basically, that needed me to be away for a good two weeks. So we couldn't find the right time or the schedule couldn't... To uh, do like a proper podcast to put up. Yeah. So our schedule just didn't permit the uh, uh, podcast. But now that that's over, we're back to our usual... uh, What do you call it? Scheduling. Schedule, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I... I, I'm sorry that we've been away, but I'm very happy to be back. And today we've got a really, really, really exciting episode. I mean, Mel's a little bit nervous because we're spilling the tea on a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, but I think it, it is a good discussion topic that, uh, you know, people do talk about and, you know, questions has been asked. So I think it's good that we have a conversation about, about this. About this, yeah. And I mean, you as you guys already could guess from the episode description and episode title, we will talk about how much crochet is really worth. And I know this is something that a lot of makers, you know, talk yeah. about. And it's one of our biggest like pet peeve and how people questioning how much it's worth. But before we begin that, I have a little announcement, a few announcements to make because June is going to be an insane crazy month for us but a very exciting one that I think that if given the chance I would like you guys to you know come say hi and be a part of so the first announcement is that we will be at this if you are based in Singapore of course we will be at this event called Public Garden Public Garden is back yeah it's been gone it's been closed for two years because of COVID but now they reopened it it's basically an Asia Pacific regional art fair and we are one of the the brands or the teams that uh, get approved to be to set up to a participate, stall. participate, yeah. Yeah, to participate and set up a booth there. So we will be there at Public Garden, when's the date? 11 and, and 12. 11 and 12 June. Event starts at 1pm, ends at 7pm. 7 7pm, 7 yeah. Uh, the location will be at the Suntech City Convention Centre Hall 404. So just make your way there and we'll see you between 1pm to 7pm. We're really excited. Really, really excited. Because this event only happens three times a year and we usually only go for maybe two of this of these uh, a year. Times, but yeah. we haven't had it since like before COVID. Yeah. So this really feels like like a step into getting our regular our old normal, <laughs> yeah. our old normal back. So I'm really excited. We've got some. We're bringing a lot of our clothes this time, and I don't know, like smaller items like bags and handbags. Yeah, but and I what, think and, most yeah. important is that we will get to see you guys again. Yeah, you know? I think we're not really looking to earn anything, which is <laughs> sort of in line with this episode. And usually, we don't ever cover the cost of what it takes to be there because we have to pay. Uh, was it like almost 400 Singapore yeah. dollars? So we have to pay 400 Singapore dollars to be there at the booth. So we will never make this amount in 6 hours a day in 12 hours total. So it's just really a place for you guys to come, say hi, chit chat with us, see what we've made, talk to us about it. And this is this this event is where we meet you, the most of you guys. Yeah. And I'm so excited about that because I'm finally going to be able to put faces to names again. Yeah. Yeah, and I like this event because uh, it brings a lot of... Uh, I think they do their marketing well to mm-hmm. bring uh, about like very like-minded people yeah, like us. Similar who, brands, yeah. Yeah, you know, similar brands. We get to meet other um, 
uh, like artists, artists and, other craft people. And not just from Singapore, because it's Asia Pacific. So we've got lots of like uh, artists from Malaysia, from Thailand, Taiwan. from Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan well. from yeah. Hong Kong. Um, some of them are from China. And I don't know how many international brands would be there this year oh, yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. Because um, we still do have travel restrictions. But... I think we will be able to see a little bit more, or at least, you know, get a feel of who's in the market still. Yeah. Because all our friends, um, some of the friends that we usually, we meet at this event, and I mean, they have now become friends. A lot of them are, you know, like getting married, having babies. So <laughs> the environment has just changed so much in the past Within four, the past, five, yeah. six years. Two, three years, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be able to see... Who, Maybe new faces. Yeah. yeah, who will be there? So I'm excited. So again, come see us at Public Garden. It's 11 to 12 June. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. It will be at the Suntec City Convention Centre at Hall 404. The Exhibition Hall 404. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, more details will be definitely be posted up. Uh, on our Instagram. On our Instagram, yeah. yeah. So that's next weekend. But then the exciting thing is the following weekend on the 18th of... Am I right? 18th of yeah. June? 18 of June. Yeah. That's a Saturday. It's the Singapore Pink Dot. Happy Pride, man. Happy Pride. So Pink Dot is basically Singapore's version of Pride. Basically, our Pride celebrations. Yeah. It will be held at the Hong Lim Park. Um, unfortunately, no foreigners are allowed because Singapore still views it as like a, a social, a political demonstration. Yeah. So for some reason in Singapore... Foreigners are not allowed to join political demonstrations, even yeah. though Pride is now, you know, full of concerts. It's like a bazaar. There's like food. Yeah. It's like music, dancing. Yeah. But you guys are definitely welcome to hang around the park. Yeah. Around so, the area. So what they do is they cordon off this park, but then all the foreigners and non-locals they will sit right outside the park. So the party is even bigger outside the park. <laughs> yeah. So if you happen to be in Singapore. Uh, in, on the 18th of June which is a Saturday and you are not local you are still free to come the music is loud enough for you to hear outside the perimeters of the park and we can just sit there and have a picnic so if you are there we will be there so come you know, drop us a message on Instagram if you need to or you have my number 91272743 you can text us at our business number WhatsApp number whatever and tell us where you'll be and we can do a little meet up and take some photos with you guys so I'm, I'm excited about that as well yeah we haven't had Pink Dot in like a, yeah. Pride in two years as yeah, well yeah exactly so yeah. it's really it's a lot of things happening yeah like opening up starting again and so you know we are just excited for all these upcoming things yeah and then the next exciting oh my god we just have so many exciting <laughs> announcements to make right so announcement number three is in the following week so the week after no two weeks after two weeks after pink yeah. dot basically the first weekend of july we will be in kl that's kuala lumpur in malaysia so if you and I know we have some Malaysian listeners and I know some of you guys are based in Kuala Lumpur. So if you are in KL or based in KL, I will be there. Mel will be there too, but she will be off doing her own things and doing some work on her own, on her own projects. But I will be wandering around. and so if Wandering you, around. Wan wandering around KL. So if you have any recommendations, um, any places, anywhere to buy yarn. <laughs> oh no. Please send me your recommendations. I would love... And if you guys want to just meet up... For a coffee to, you yeah, know, for have coffee crochet or... conversations. <laughs> that would be cute. Like real life crochet conversations with maybe Ines, Ines. and maybe Mel. <laughs> right. So if you are in Kuala Lumpur on that first weekend of July... Uh, drop us a message. Maybe we can arrange some sort of meetup at the Starbucks or whatever. Nice, I don't know what, some coffee place. You guys would know, okay? Uh, yeah, send us a message. And I would love to see. They will be there for a week. So we don't know the dates yet, but we will announce it later on yeah. on our Instagram. Closer to the closer to the date of departure, we'll announce the dates that we'll be there. And that was a heck of a lot of <laughs> announcements. Updates, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess that's what happens when you've gone away for two weeks and then you come back with all these new and, and exciting things that have been happening. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then now we have to like, you know, go through. And I'm so sorry it's been 10 minutes and we still haven't started the episode yet. But I really wanted to get all these out. Yeah. So to summarize, summarize all the pre-show <laughs> announcements, um, we'll be at Public Garden. 
11 to 12 June, I keep needing to check the calendar. 11 to 12 June will be at Public Garden. 18th of June will be at Pink Dot. Then we have the 23rd of June, the following weekend will be around, uh, will be just back to normal. And then the weekend after that, we'll be in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yeah. So come by and say hi at any one of these events. You have three chances in and out of Singapore. Yeah. So any one of these events, any one of these weekends, if you feel like coming to meet us, just, you know, send yeah. us a message don't, so I don't know what to shy. expect. We won't bite. <laughs> Mel won't bite. Maybe I will because I've got, you know, I've got acrylic nails now. Now, well, yeah. So I won't bite but maybe I'll claw. When I hug somebody, sometimes they say <laughs> that my nails claw into them. Don't scare them away but we'll be excited to see everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, now that's out of the way, let's jump into what this episode really yeah. is about. First, let me take a sip of water. Okay, so... Uh, let's put on the serious serious cap now because we're talking about really serious things. So, the true cost of crochet. Exactly how much is crochet worth? And this is an episode that we've want, wanted to talk about for quite some time now. We just haven't really done enough research to make sure that the information that we provide in this episode is as accurate as can yeah. be. And also we're trying to see and like figure out how we can present it in a way that is easy to understand. Because I think this is something that every crocheter or crochet artist or designer will completely, a thousand percent, understand with us. Yeah. So the question here is, why is crochet so expensive, right? And everyone knows that crochet is expensive, but what they don't know maybe is why it's so expensive. And so in this episode, we want to try to break down the why of it. Exactly why is crochet expensive and to really break down the true cost and value of crochet because the cost of it and the value of it is not the same thing. Yeah, it's not the same thing. Um, that's why we are talking about how much is it really worth. You yeah, know? So in the, total, yeah. So the definition of worth is definitely not just the cost The cost itself. price, yeah. So we're gonna, we, we, we have broken it down into a few sections in our notes. We're gonna talk about the cost of it, like the raw cost of it. And then we're gonna talk about how much we charge on top of that why and what the rationale is behind it. Of course, keep in mind that everything is based from our perspective based in Singapore and we're going to use uh, numbers and laws that are pertaining to Singapore itself. But I will give you conversions, so like different conversions from Singapore dollars to US dollars to pounds so that maybe it gives you guys a better understanding of things but because today we're going to talk all numbers I've never seen so many <laughs> numbers in my notes before it's yeah. giving me a little bit of a headache yeah. I guess because uh, using numbers would give a, a better understanding yeah. you know, it, I in think terms it of conveys that. the true picture of it a little bit more yeah and but we'll do it really slowly so it doesn't <laughs> confuse. Uh, hopefully not confusing us as well. Yeah, I hope it doesn't confuse you but yeah. I'm quite sure it will depress you as a crocheter <laughs> because when you see how much we really are actually earning, it's a really depressive chart or number or sheet to look at. Yeah, And it really makes me sad because crochet is such a beautiful art yeah. I mean come on we have a whole like we're all part of this crochet conversation podcast right we all know and love what crochet can do and the value it adds to our lives but people see it as just another one time workshop experience that they can do and they don't understand that there's so much more behind the art so today we're going to break down exactly how much it's it costs and how much it's valued at how much it's worth and how much we are really getting paid and also I feel like I want to do this for all in solidarity for all the crochet artists out there <laughs> yeah because we all know the look on their faces on the customers faces when we tell them the true cost of it or we've all had those nasty comments when we tell them how much our crochet item is, is worth or how much it costs Cost, yeah and they, you know, whisper to their friends, oh, I could do that for cheaper, or I can do it cheaper, or my grandmother can do it, or why is it so expensive, or you're overcharging me, and yada, 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 yada. Or like, you know, I've even heard or read articles where nasty customers say, then go and buy a discounted yarn if that's so difficult for you. You know, you can yeah. go to any discounted store and get discounted yarn, and we've all had that moment where our work is being deliberately put down, not for any other fault apart from that they don't understand it. And so maybe if we put together a good enough episode, you could send these episodes to your customers and tell them, look, exactly how much it's, it costs, how much it's worth, and how much time on top of that goes yeah. into our work. Yeah. Because time is money, right? 
So, let's start by breaking down um, the value of one Singapore dollar. So, we're going to have this whole episode in Singapore dollars. So, when we say $10 or $20 or $100, it's Singapore dollars. But to give you an idea of what that is, every one Singapore dollar, and I think this is accurate as of today, right? The, yeah. At this moment, uh, one, Singapore, one Singapore dollar is 70 cents in USD. Right, 70 US, 70 cents USD. How am I saying it? 70, <laughs> 70 cents USD rate, USD value. 70 USD <laughs> cents. <laughs> okay, and it's also 60p, so 60 cents in pounds, so 60p. Yeah. So that's how much one dollar is worth in the US and in the UK, respectively. So let's talk about um, the raw cost of things to even get started to buy a set of tools of your own. Let's talk about that, okay? Let's say we get one crochet hook. That's just ten, one. Just one. That's just one and in one size only. That's ten dollars. But we all know that's not true. But let's just say for sake of argument that we only use one crochet hook size per project. Okay, that's let's say on average ten dollars per crochet hook. Let's say stitch markers is valued at five dollars. Darning needles are five dollars, and a swatch ruler is maybe five dollars, especially if you get the bigger square ones. Yeah, yeah, and we are only considering this uh, tools because we know for a fact that it's pretty necessary to do any yeah, project. Yeah, you can't to start have any a project. yeah. You can't have a you can't create any crochet thing without a crochet hook, without stitch markers. I mean, maybe you could, but I don't see how that's possible to create like garments, uh, in with using no <laughs> stitch markers at all. Uh, dining needles, of course, unless you want to have a very taily top, <laughs> and a swatch ruler because if you're making clothes, you have to swatch. Yeah. So all in all, that total cost comes out to twenty five dollars Singapore dollars without the yarn, and I think that this is a number that's important to keep in mind because we're going to be referencing this $25 cost price uh, or the cost of the tools a lot in the future in the future yeah. uh, on the rest of the episodes because I think it's important to remember that just to even get started on a project there is already this sunk cost of $25 and of course the reality of things is that we are not just getting one crochet hook Yeah, and there are other things uh, like scissors and whatever else that you need that we're not going to include because I think that a scissors is um, you know it's like additional and maybe a ruler is like additional as well but I think it's necessary when you're counting a swatch right. uh, if you just want to use a regular ruler you could but swatch swatching is something that is already confusing to most people or to some people so if we don't include a swatch gauge I think that will just increase the level of difficulty right. that any artist would go through with a project and that would increase the, the perceived value of it. Right, So right. I think it's important to keep a swatch ruler as part of it. Darning needles, there's no way around it. You can't use yeah, sewing needles. Yeah, exactly. So I think this $25 is the bare minimum and we will reference it a lot. So every time I talk about projects, I'm going to break down the cost of it and then after that, I will include this number of $25 into it and that we will figure out that we will figure out the full cost in just raw materials alone, not even including our time, just to obtain these things, these will be the numbers To that, basically create something. Yeah, and these will be the numbers that we'll present to you guys. So to make things a little bit easier to understand and less confusing, we've broken down the next part of projects into four sections. Small items, or basically small projects, medium-sized items or projects, larger items, and XL size items. So the really, really large ones. So I will tell you how much yarn we'll need and, you know, we'll calculate cost of it. So right now we're not even talking about how long it takes. We're not talking about how much, you know, time and effort gets yeah. put in. We're only talking about how much yarn we'll need to buy. So if you're picturing buying the, you know, picturing yourself as somebody that's buying the yarn and the materials for it, we're still at the store. Okay, we yeah. haven't come home yet. We're still standing <laughs> in the store trying to decide how much how much we're going to end up paying for it. Yeah, like the true uh, the cost value. of the goods, of yeah. the materials as and of now. Yeah. And also I want to add that 
from a crochet artist's point of view, it is very unlikely that a crochet artist will get the yarn at a manufacturer's or wholesale price. Price, yeah. Because the MOQ, or that stands for minimum order quantity, which and if you don't know what that means, it's the minimum number that you need to hit in order for the manufacturer or the factory or the wholesale supplier to even entertain your order. And this MOQ is usually stated by the company, how much they are willing to sell you, how much your order has to meet, and these numbers are di dictated or decided by the factory themselves. So to give you an example, uh, I think like a standard number or a regular number would be, say, the factory, factory ABC yarn, say, is that you need to put in a hundred kilograms of yarn as your MOQ, as your minimum quantity order. Which means that if you place an order for anything less than that, they won't they won't entertain it. They will just reject you outright. So you've got to hit that one thousand kilograms of yarn, and that would estimate to be about a thousand balls of yarn in total. Oh, okay. Right? And considering each ball is 100 grams, grams yeah. of maybe like acrylic or whatever. Obviously, cotton would be a bit heavier. So that's how you just decide on what you want to get. But... Uh, in order to get to get anything from a factory to really bring the cost of yarn down, you will need to get at these crazy large, quantities. Large quantities yeah. And if we're talking about five or six dollars per hundred grams of ball at retail cost, can you imagine how much you're spending just to get a hundred kilograms of yarn from a factory to get each ball of yarn cheap enough? Yeah. And not to mention, don't think shipping will be free because you're getting so much. Because you're getting so much, they would require you to purchase a, a crate in order for them to ship it to you. And so shipping can go up to three or 400 USD alone if you're going to bring in 100 kilograms of yarn. And this, I think, based on our research, because we do deal with yarn suppliers for our business, yeah. we know already 100 kilograms of yarn is not a lot. There are some companies out there who require you buy more Even of more, it. Even more, yeah. Because Up to it, 500, it's pretty... I you agree. Know, yeah. And if you think about a thousand balls of yarn, if you were to break that down in 10 colours, you only get a certain amount of, yeah. you know, you can get 20 colours and you would, wouldn't even have enough to make, you know, that many things. So, it's really, really expensive to get yarn so cheap from a factory. And I think it's important that I talk about this because a common, a general crochet artists will not be buying yarn in this fashion. Yeah. A majority or at least 90% of crochet artists that I know and am aware of will buy yarn at retail cost. Obviously, we try to find many, many, many ways of getting yarn on discount or maybe we buy in bulk or we sign up with brands to be one of their resellers or wholesalers and there are ways around it. But in general, the amount that we're getting from the factory is it's still helping them turn a profit, which means that we are still buying it at a retail cost. It's just at a really low, lower retail cost as opposed to the final yarn that you buy in a store for a regular consumer. Yeah, correct. You know, so just keep in mind that it is not possible for crochet artists to buy yarn that is really, really, really discounted. And, you know, again, majority of us will be buying yarn at retail price. Unless your business is to bring in and out yarn, to import and export yarn, then that's a different story, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the regular Joe crochet art, or Joanne crochet <laughs> artists, like you and me, who only really go out to get the yarn depending on what custom order that we get yeah. because we're small businesses, right? We're working from home. If, even if we have a studio, that's a whole other thing because that, that's additional cost. But let's just say we have a studio. How much yarn can we really stock? Store, yeah. And how much yarn can we really buy such that our cost price goes so low? Exactly. So I think, you know, it's good to keep in mind as a regular... Let's say if you don't crochet and you're, you're still buying crochet from somebody, if you're still learning and you're still a consumer of crochet products from other artists, keep in mind that all the yarn that you buy and I buy and we buy are all coming from the same retail racks. Yeah, and I think it's important to know that as crochet artists, we do invest in good materials. And I can understand that some people will say, yeah, you know, I can find cheaper material. For, Buy discounted yeah, yarn. Yeah, you know, or, or there is a reason why this yarn are at a cheaper, cheaper rate because of the quality, right? So we need to remember and understand that when we want to buy good quality yarn, 
the price is definitely going to be higher and in general that is the market rate for that price yeah I mean you pay for better quality and that also applies for yarn yeah exactly yeah a crochet artist would want to buy good materials good quality ones yeah. for you especially if you're requesting something to wear they would get you or they would try to get you a good quality cotton or exactly. a really high quality anti-pilling acrylic they would never just get you something that's itchy and scratchy and that would be not you would never wear because they are the ones who actually have to put in like 20, 40, 50, 60 hours to make your piece for you. Yeah. So we're not talking about buying cheap materials. We're talking, we're going to make, you know, we're going to work under the assumption that your crochet artist that you've gone to to commission something would put in time and effort to pick out materials according to your specifications and what you want and to maybe recommend you something that is of a better quality that you can wash and not have it ruined in one wash yeah definitely and the better the material the higher the cost it's just uh-huh, the way it is exactly yeah. so I think I wanted to put this out as a disclaimer first because I can't imagine some certain people listening to this or if you don't crochet you're not a crochet artist and you're just stumbling across this episode I could I would imagine that it's a little bit confusing why we talk about our items or the yarn at like a retail cost. Yeah. But that's the way it is because we all buy yarn from the same places and yarn only comes into our community via these same few places. Yeah. Either your local yarn shop or whatever. And your local yarn shop would only be selling yarn unless they have somebody there that's making things and putting (laughs) one or two things up for sale. But it's not their main product. It's not their main craft. Their main craft is to buy and sell yarn. And that is their business. That is why they can afford to bring in the quantities. But people like us who are crochet designers, bringing in yarn is not our main business. Our main business is to use our brains and create something in crochet for you. That's why I think it's so important to note why we keep referring to the cost of yarn or materials at a retail cost. Okay, I'm sorry. I know that that seemed like a really long disclaimer or backstory explanation whatever but you know like and I know Mel agrees with me that it's it's somehow it's necessary I feel like this episode wouldn't be as informative or as accurate yeah. if we omitted that piece of information um, and I also wanted to give you guys like a really good idea of what you know what how we see things from a crochet artist point of view yeah you have to set the stage so that you know, everything else would make sense. Yeah, later explanation on. later would you know, link back to this yeah. to this scenario. So now that that's out of the way, let's recap. Okay, we our raw cost of just buying the tools alone is at value at twenty five dollars Singapore dollars. Singapore yeah. dollars. Yeah, that's assuming that we buy everything at retail, including the yarn, which we've just explained why. Because this whole spiel about buying yarn from a wholesaler versus from the store also does apply from you know from the other crochet tools perspective like the, the oh, hooks yes, yes. and whatever of okay? course yeah so just to do a little recap um, crochet hooks we have written it down as approximately $10 I think that's like a middle ground because I know at least in Singapore crochet hooks can go up to $25 <laughs> yeah. sometimes yes. right if you buy a false crochet hook you can pay you know $70 for it yeah. so I think $10 is being very modest and we're not trying to be overly extravagant here uh, then we have stitch markers, which we've put it down as $5, darning needles at $5, and a swatch gauge ruler at $5. So that's everything that's $25, Singapore dollars, without the yarn alone. And for the yarn, we have decided to put a value at $10 per 100 grams of yarn. So if you're talking about acrylic, this would be a really good quality acrylic. And if you're talking about cotton, this would be an extremely, extremely, extremely cheap cotton price. Because most cotton is valued at, what can I say, like nine, $9 per 50 grams. Yeah. So you could be paying upwards of 12 to $15 for 100, 100 grams, grams of ball. ball. And my, I think you've, you, you guys have heard me say this before, my biggest grouse is that yarn always, cotton yarn, always comes in 50, 50 gram balls, grams. Yeah. Which is why we decided to work with a factory on our own so that they can produce yarn in that 100, 120 gram format that we really like. So, assuming that each ball of yarn is $10 for 100 grams and all the crochet tools are at $25 without the yarn. 
okay, we have broken the next few portions into small items, medium, large and extra large items like we've said, and we're going to break down what that means. So let's talk about small items first. Uh, I have, I have, or at least I have categorized it as small items are things that you can make with one ball of yarn. So like a handphone case, a little basket, a small pouch, uh, what else? Maybe like a small beanie. Yeah. I don't think you could do... An adult one with 100 grams, right? Maybe you could, but that also If you also have a really depends. small hit. <laughs> I guess that depends. The slouchier the yarn, um, right. the beanie, the more yarn you need. If you're changing colours in between, the more yarn you need. If you're doing whatever, you know. Yeah. So I have labelled it as beanies under small items. So having said that, that's only one ball of yarn. So that's $10 at cost price. Right. So now let's take retail price of all the tools, which is $25, plus $10 the cost of yarn. A small item like a handphone case or a bottle holder or a small pouch or a little basket or a little beanie is already value at $35 at cost price. Again, remember that this is in Singapore dollars, so 35 Singapore dollars, every one Singapore dollar is 70 US cents and 60p in uh, 60 pounds. In yeah. pounds yeah. Then we have maybe the medium size items and maybe this you need two balls of yarn. Let's say a small, maybe a small scarf, like a really small thin <laughs> scarf. Um, maybe like a small crossbody bag yeah. with a strap. Um, what else? Yeah, I think maybe like this would be a good, anything you can make with two balls of yarn alone. Uh, let's say two balls of yarn, that's $20. Plus $25 for all the tools, mm -hmm. that's $45 Singapore dollars in cost alone. Yeah. Yeah. So numbers, that's even before you start, you need yep. to spend $45 to just get mm -hmm. everything in place for you to start on the project. And it's already sounding pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about larger items. And the way that I have classified it is if it takes four balls and four balls of yarn and above. Mm -hmm. So maybe we're talking about a small baby blanket. Maybe we're talking about, you know, a looser tank top. Maybe a looser crop top, maybe. Maybe a cushion cover. Maybe a smaller adult shawl, like a triangle shawl, maybe. Yeah. So let's say that takes four balls of yarn. That's $40. Plus the cost of materials, that's $25. The total is $65 Singapore dollars. $65. Yeah, for a top, a nice little small top. That number is already insane to me. Okay, so now let's talk about the extra large items. Yeah. And this this is where I am comfortable with. Most of my projects are larger items, or at least the projects I've been working on the past year or so, or maybe two years throughout the whole COVID, have been bigger items, um, like XL items. And that would be, you know, like cardigans, uh, maybe dresses, maybe more complex tops with sleeves, because mm -hmm. I think people don't realise how much yarn sleeves take. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It's like, I think I've used like 150 grams of cotton on one sleeve. On one side, yeah. Because oh I'm currently working on a top that I found the, I finally found the yarn. It, it's a short sleeve top. Um, and I always wanted to extend because my vision for this top was a long sleeve top. But only after making it, I had 500 grams in total. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you ran out of yarn, right? I had no sleeves. So I finally found the yarn and I'm alarmed. I'm super alarmed at the amount of yarn my freaking sleeves are just eating up. So yeah. if you ever want to use up scrap yarn, you can just make sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> if you have enough, yeah. If you have enough yarn, which, oh my goodness, okay. So extra large items and I classify this between six to eight balls of yarn. Oh, okay. easily, yeah. Yeah, easily. So we could go, we're talking about if it's $10 every ball of yarn, we're talking about $60 to $80 in yarn alone. And, you know, like I was saying, more complex tops with sleeves, maybe some cardigans, maybe some shorter summer dresses, um, maybe like a sweater, like a shorter sweater. If you want to make the one of those, you know, hexagon granny square cardigans, I think yeah. you would need between 6 to 8 as well. Of course, your size matters. So crochet is a skinny person's craft. 
Mm-hmm. Mel and I are not skinny people by any means, so we need to work in the medium to large yeah. sizing. And yeah. sometimes the extra large, we want it to be, you know, loose and comfortable because, you know, this is Singapore and it's summer all year round. We need loose fitting, yeah, flowy definitely. clothes. So that takes more yarn, unfortunately. Yeah. So the most recent uh, top like t-shirt that I completed, I uh-huh. think I used about 600 to 650 yeah. grams you of yarn. Used, yeah. oh, there was almost nothing left. There was nothing there left. There was no scrap yarn <laughs> yeah, left. Nothing left. You used almost 600 grams, I think. Yeah. Because, you know, when you buy a ball of yarn, it's not always exactly 100 grams. Yeah, it's that's 100 correct. give or take. Yeah. So you could be getting 95 and it's still acceptable within the industry. And it may not seem like very much, but think about it. If it's 95 grams give or take per ball across 10 balls of yarn that's 50 grams that you're not getting so also keep that in mind um so whenever you're buying yarn just buy one extra ball because you could also be getting 90 grams in that 100 gram ball that's also acceptable yeah also keep that in mind (laughs) so talking about xl items now if you are using six balls of yarn that's 60 dollars plus the 25 dollars cost price, I mean, of the materials, you are paying about $85. Wow. But if you move on to eight balls of yarn, that's where I reside. Like, all my things, I buy six, seven to eight balls of yarn. That's $80 for the yarn alone. With the $25 for the tools, you are paying $105 insane dollars. Yeah, imagine starting a project that is already costing you $100 to start. And I want to say, if you manage to find the yarn on discount and you pay a lesser price of it, it does not mean that the value of what you're paying for is $105 for 8 balls of yarn. Yep. Let's say you walk into a store. So I like to give the example of Spotlight because Spotlight is Singapore's version of like a like a craft, I don't know, like a Michaels or Joann's or whatever that sells yarn, right? That's the only closest I can I think, think of based on all the YouTube videos I've watched, right? So... Uh, so in Singapore and in Australia we in Malaysia as well we have a yarn store or craft store called Spotlight and it's not it's not particularly um it's just it's not just all yarn but they do have a big section of yarn big uh, enough section big yes big enough yeah. yeah so Spotlight they always have sales and if we buy yarn we always try to time our projects or when we buy yarn we try to time it with their sale so that we get something at a cheaper value, say, you know, sometimes they are 50% off on the rare occasions. Usually it's like 30% yeah, or 40% sometimes is really huge already. Yeah. But let's say you manage to get something that is at 50% off. So eight balls of yarn, instead of paying 105 now, you would pay $50, 52, whatever. Let's just round down. You would pay $50 for all your tools now in- inclusive but it does not mean that the value of your whatever you're buying was is not at a hundred dollars because if you if somebody were to come to you at a different stage in time and there is no sale what are you going to tell them yeah are you going to say hang on i'll only buy yarn <laughs> during, during sale. the sale so i will not take your order until there's a sale but that how is that sustainable as a business it's not yeah you need to be able to calculate the cost of it such that you can walk in at any time and pay 100% of the price for all the yarn you need. Yeah. So, $105 for 8 balls of yarn, inclusive of the tools. <laughs> Even if I say, let's not calculate the cost of tools. Yeah. And we're just talking about the cost of the materials, yeah. That's still $80. Yeah, that's still $80. And again, how can you not calculate the cost of tools? Because every set of yarn is different. You need different tools for it. You need different crochet hooks for different types. Yeah. It's just, it's... The numbers alone at this point is insane. So, now I, if now let's ask, okay, I like to ask, I like to present this to my customers and I like to say, would you pay $85 for a dress? And if they say yes, I would pay $85 and nothing more, then I will say, okay. So now let me tell you what that means. That means I buy the yarn, I put them in the bag, I buy the crochet hook still in the packaging, put it in a bag. I zip up the bag and I give you the bag. So now all you have your dress is still, it's just, it's still in the raw the, form. In the raw <laughs> yarn form. That's what it means. If you give me $85 now, this is all that I can do for you. I can only buy the yarn and give it to you. Yeah. And then you have to figure out how you're going to turn it into a dress. But if now you want me on top of that to take this $85 and turn it into something, 
unless you're saying I'm doing it for free, it, it yeah, it doesn't make sense. I just I don't understand why people would think. So anyway, now that we've talked about this, I do want to say one more thing about this. This is everything that I've presented to you is on the assumption that you, as a customer, have come to us, the crochet designers directly like you've approached us directly and say i want to make something can you, you know, do can blah, you, blah, yeah. blah 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 and we've settled it now if you come across us on i don't know maybe social media or instagram or, or on our website by the time it takes for you like by the time you have seen our product and want to contact us we would have already spent a lot of money on packaging and website fees and marketing social media marketing and, yeah. and all that had to be done in order for you to even see the post in the first place or whatever what post or whatever it may be to see it in the first place and then be able to come to us later on so you seeing us it's not a, just it's not a it's not by coincidence it's not by chance we actually have to spend money to get that to you so do we absorb that cost of it and not earn anything? Or do we include that in the price of the clothing that you know yeah. us to make? Yeah, I guess that's something to think about. You know, the other, I guess, operating expenses and other fees that comes with that. So, Mel has calculated for me that it takes about 20% on top of all your fees, all the cost price of things. It takes about, it's about an additional 20% on top of all your price that you're paying for the raw materials that includes marketing, website fees, Etsy seller fees and whatever other fees on whatever other platform. If you allow payment by card, the bank takes a certain amount. Yeah. You know, all that works out to about 20%. And if I have to ship that to you, that shipping <laughs> that, cost yeah, that and doesn't the include shipping packaging cost, yeah. cost and all that would be 20%. Okay. So now let's go back to our numbers. To recap, small items are now $35.00. Medium item items are $45, larger items are $65, and XL items could go between $85 to $105. Yeah. Now, if I were to put a 20% increase on top of that to cover all the other costs that comes with it, what are the numbers now? A small item would jump from $35 to $42. The medium items would jump from $45 to $54. Yeah. The larger items would jump from $65 to $78. It's just it's just getting scarier and scarier. And the extra large items would jump from $85 to $102 or $105 to $126. Yeah. So this just shows the true cost at least the cost value of producing something itself, it's really, really high, you know, in terms of making something by hand. And we're not even talking about the value of my effort and time to that purchase, goes into yeah. using my magic crochet hook and <laughs> transforming it into a dress or a top or a scarf or a shawl or a or cardigan. Anything you want, yeah. Or anything you want. It's like magic, really. <laughs> but it's a cost to the magic, right? It's magic that we don't get paid for. <laughs> So these numbers are, to be honest, they really made me really depressed. No, I shouldn't use that word. It just, it made me really down and it made me sort of question like, why am I still doing this? Like nobody is willing to pay. Or maybe I think the value, the perceived value of crochet is still like, it's grandma stuff. Yeah. You know, it's ugly stuff, you know, even though just type in crochet on Instagram and you see so many modern clean brands that have like oh modern crochet and mm -hmm. like you know like clean minimalistic crochet but they don't it's still it's too ingrained in our culture that crochet is something that your grandmother does for you for free right you know she does it for Christmas every Christmas you get a crochet sweater <laughs> or a crochet scarf or, or knitted socks and I think this also applies to knit in fact I think it's worse for knit because of the sheer amount of time it takes to knit as compared to crochet yeah so I think me I think for knit you it's it should be more expensive. But, oh, that's Whiskey. <laughs> He's, um... Trying to settle down. You know how dogs are when they try to lie down and they go around in circles in their bed before they lie down? Yeah, that's what Whiskey's doing right now. And his little claws are like, you know... <laughs> like on, you, all over the, the place. <laughs> like me. On the... So, okay, so that's the, the, the first part of 
how much crochet really cost at raw cost alone. Yeah, and I guess just not, I mean, if we are not just talking about business as a person who could be picking this up as a hobby if you want to start, mm-hmm. you know, on a project, you need to be aware that you can easily spend $100, you exactly. know, making something for yourself. Crochet is just not a cheap art yeah, it's not. To, to start off with and what more you're paying somebody. Um, you know, I like to... I like to make the comparison from crochet to painting because actually painting, painting okay. because I, I mean, I don't know if some of you know, but if you've been following us from the start, you know that I also paint yeah. and I'm also, you know, my, my background is, is in art, is in fine arts and performing arts. So um, for those of you who know, I also paint and my means, the what I paint is modern, modern abstract or modern contemporary. Uh, what am I saying? Contemporary abstract. <laughs> and... It's something that people don't realize too that paint costs a lot of money. A small tube of paint could be, you know, could be easily twelve or fifteen or, or twenty dollars if you're buying good quality paint that right. has that sheen and luster. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about, you know, like mixing mediums or spraying mediums and then the varnishes and then the gesso, the primer, yeah. and all the other things you need that go along with it, sure, it could be cheap. But if you want something that's really good quality, like a good, really good quality painting, it's going to be expensive. Yeah, for And to sure. me, that's the exact same thing as crochet. If you really want something that's cheap and fast and easy to make, yeah, we could do that for you. We could just get a discounted, scratchy acrylic yarn and make something for you if all you want is the final product. Yeah, I understand But that. if you want something that is functional, that you can wear, and that a piece that you can love and grow old with, then that takes time and money and effort to not only source the material to purchase the material to transform the material and then get that piece of magic yeah. to you and I just think it's so sad that people don't like artists are so undervalued yeah unfortunately <laughs> especially yeah. in this day and age like you would think after COVID there would be a bigger appreciation for artists because when there was nothing to do everybody wanted to, to be, be all artist, up in our yeah. space right <laughs> yeah I think the bakers had it worse though oh yeah we like Listen, suddenly everybody was like baker home bakers at home, yeah. yeah so if you are if you are a home baker like no no hate it's just that I feel it, people people rush to these things and they spike the price up but once it's over to them they're like oh it's over it, it was a fad but you know, there is a community of people like us and I think we are a huge community who don't think it's a fad and it's, you know, it would, we will we'll suffer the real consequences of having, you know, people who don't know anything about it you know, share information yeah. that's not true or not accurate because they think that it could be, you know, done in a day or yeah. you just need three hours. Or YouTube made me think that, you know, it takes like one day to make a cardigan. It's... yeah. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's really not, like, realistically not possible, you know, if you really know the craft. Uh, I agree. So, I, you know, on some levels, I'm also quite happy that we're doing this podcast because I feel like it's a platform for us to really shed light. And what we need really in the industry to change is educating the customers yeah and i know and i don't say that from any like condescending point of view but it's just general knowledge that about the craft that it, and it could be whatever craft right it's the cus- it's the customers and the consumers and they need to understand a little bit more in order to place real value to it otherwise they would just say i'll pay you ten dollars make me a s- scarf or a yeah. sweater but they don't know how much it it really costs. actually you know yeah and especially friends and family because i'm sure all of you guys have one of those you know relatives or friends and family that goes i want a top like can you make one for me i'll give you 20 bucks you know but <laughs> it does not cost 20 bucks first of all you know and then the list goes on so and i just checked the time we are now running at like almost 50 minutes minutes wow and we haven't even talked about the next part, which is the value of my cost, the cost of my my effort and my time that goes into. So we have a few ways of calculating this, and I think based on the timing right now, we might have to leave it for the next episode because that would be another hour, and we are already yeah, possibly, yeah. clocking in at an hour, almost an hour at this point already. So I think we'll leave you here, and we'll continue next week. Uh, talking about the cost of it and let me just refer to my notes give me a second 
I have written down um, in my notes and we, we intend to talk about how to really break down the cost of something next. If you come across a store that sells something for X amount of dollars, how to calculate and break it down so that you know how much they're actually earning. And let me tell you, it's not a lot. We also kept in mind, you know, the minimum wage in US, UK and Singapore and calculated it backwards from there. And I think it's you know, it's it's not the way that everybody calculates how much crochet is cost because remember that this eighty five dollars and this hundred and five dollars is only just the yarn, yeah, and the tools. How do you calculate or put a cost to it after that? When now you need to take these materials, you need to take a hundred dollars worth of something and, and turn resell it, it and yeah. turn it to something to sell. Okay, exactly. Yeah. So I think we will leave that for the next episode because we have some really interesting numbers. And again, as I was saying. While this may not be the way to calculate it for everybody, I think it's important to hear the numbers because when I was doing this this research, to me it was such jaw dropping such a jaw dropping. To see moment. the numbers. Yeah, yeah. To be confronted with plain dollars and cents, how much we're actually earning and let me tell you, it's like way into the poverty line. And I don't mean <laughs> that in a dramatic way. It's not even half like the minimum wage. It's not even 25% of minimum wage yeah. is so much lesser than Lower, that. Lower, yeah. And, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. so... Definitely something that. to, you know, that why we want to talk about it and something for all of us to think about, you know? Yep, I agree. And we also, you know, in future have another episode plan about how you how the different ways you could price your items if you are a crochet artist looking to price them, how much that would be. But that would be, you know, later. Yeah, in another episode. A couple, a couple episodes from now. So... Come back again next week. Next week, we'll really talk about how much we are earning as crochet artists now that we've bought the raw materials, how much time. And I think I have a formula at how you calculated the time it yeah. takes to make something versus your experience times the number of hours times the minimum wage. I think I have a formula. Or at least we have a formula that we can put the number to it. Yeah, and, and, and to help that, yeah. to help this concept make sense. Yeah. So come back again next week. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free, as <laughs> usual, to reach out to us. And I, I think my hands look a bit scary because as I said, reach out, I'm literally like trying to yeah, reach out to yeah. Mel like I'm going to strangle her. I'm avoiding her. her, the nails from <laughs> jabbing into my face. So if you have any questions please, please, please feel free to reach out to us. And I'm really interested to know uh, experiences from you guys. Yeah, your thoughts about, you know, what is your true value, your true yeah, cause of crochet. And also, tell me your most, like, your worst experiences of telling somebody your price and what other responses you get back. Because I, you know, I feel like I just want to sympathize with people. And yeah. like, it's so interesting to know where the, how the response changes from the different regions that you guys are from and then mm -hmm. I think that would be so interesting and keep in mind that if you do share any of these experiences uh, please let me know if I have permission to retell the stories I can omit your username if you want to but just let me know if I it's if it's okay for me to share this in the next episode so if you have any other questions feel free to reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook we are at Crooked Crochet SG or you can WhatsApp or I message me, it's plus six five nine one two seven two seven four three. Or you can also email them to us at crookedcrochetsg at gmail.com. And come back next week where we'll talk about the real numbers <laughs> and get all depressed together. <laughs> yeah, get depressed together. And I yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. We'll leave you here. Enjoy the rest of your week and Bye-bye for now. Bye, guys. See ya.